Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. This is the final video in my Father's Day series on miniatures. I have really enjoyed the last few videos, just getting creative and I will link them here if you miss them, but I've made some miniature gardens and just like a miniature garden shared with some miniature tools and I'll link them below as well if you wanna check those out. We are moving on to something else in the garden and that is a miniature teeny tiny koi fish pond guys look at these fish these fish are handmade and hand painted by tracy over at mini scenes gb i'm gonna link her down below and i'll also link her pages and her socials she has a channel here on youtube and she sent me these ages ago and I'm finally using them. I'm going to be using my garden stones. These are from my garden center. So all your big DIY store with a garden section, you can get these as decorative stones for your vases. And that is what I'm using. I'm also going to be using some dried moss. I'm going to be using the UV resin and I'm also going to be using some of the poly as well. If you wanted to, you could add in some dried leaves or even, oh, imagine getting like little miniature like lily pads that would be so cool I'm also using like I said the polycraft resin from MB fiberglass I purchased this from I love mixed media so if you are interested in that available in the UK I will link that below as well now the first thing I'm gonna do is darken up my polyurethane I'm gonna use black alcohol ink because this polyurethane actually cures white and I want the bottom of my fish ponds to be as realistic as I can possibly get them. I've <laughs> never made a fish pond. I know in my head, you know, in the UK, I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but you can buy like prefabricated fish ponds that are like molded plastic that go down in waves or down in different levels. And then at the end you get a deeper level. That's what I had in my head. It didn't quite work out that way. But in my head, I felt like the bottom of my fish pond had to be grey. So I didn't want to use the black polyurethane because that does cure black. So I'm using the white poly and I'm adding in some of the black alcohol ink. Now the black alcohol ink is going to turn a lighter grey because the polyurethane cures white so it's naturally going to make it more of a pastel shade and that is what I was looking for so all I did here was mix up a teeny tiny amount of urethane polyurethane honestly I feel like it doesn't matter how little I make up it's still too much <laughs> I feel like even just like three grams of each would be enough now before this polyurethane cures it cures super fast i'm gonna lay in my first layer of these rocks now this is gonna form the fish pond shape and i am making all three in this video but later on in the video i do just focus on showing you one with glimpses of the other two as well because I just feel like the screen I don't know I feel like sometimes when there's too much on screen it's a little bit chaotic so I like to just focus on one thing sometimes and this was definitely one of those times so I'm just laying my stones down and to be honest it started already getting to the point where I was running out of time. I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but it is starting to go gray. I've sped it up here for you so you can kind of see that color shift from black to the dark gray. And I was still trying to get stones in at this point and it was, it was harder. I decided to use some of these metal um, inclusions. Now, these were sent to me by Denise at I Love Mixed Media and she sent me two bottles recently and one is a beautiful turquoise blue. I figured a little bit of decorative stone at the bottom of our miniature fish ponds would just add all of the yumminess. But um, sadly at this point, the polyurethane had pretty much cured. Again, this is real time so you can see how quickly it goes. Um, it had pretty much gone. So I was hoping to be able to stick it into the polyurethane. And I mean, it doesn't, it does not like it moves. It doesn't move. It does stay there because it's heavy, but it didn't actually dig in. I couldn't get it to dig in. Now, this was a completely pointless exercise. Don't do this. I thought, let me dig. Let me dig into this polyurethane and create some 
rippled texture effect on the bottom of the fish ponds for the other two it was too late I couldn't dig at all um and as soon as I put <laughs> as soon as I put the resin on it it just disappeared it was a completely pointless exercise so yeah just take it from me at this point it is time for me to lay my fish down now these are again going to be multi-layered pieces and very 3d i want the rocks and the walls of the fish pond to come out and over so protruding through the surface of the item now again these can be key rings charms you know key 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 rings did i just say key rings fridge magnets is the word i was looking for these can really be anything you want and i also thought of doing like a, a like a larger one like a square coaster size and you could easily put that in a box frame as some wall art and then you can go absolutely huge imagine this in that giant mold that let's resin sent me do you remember that giant tabletop mold a huge fish pond in there I can't, the, the possibilities are endless but again it's time to put down our teeny tiny miniature koi fish now some of these i want to say they're around a centimeter long they are so cute and again these were painted handmade and hand painted by tracy over at mini scenes gb slippery little suckers <laughs> i've always wanted to say that shout out to julia roberts um yeah i kept dropping this one it just didn't want to stay in my tweezers i am using uv resin to get them down in i love the round one i've put the biggest koi in the round one once i've sat them where i want them i've put this under the uv light so every time i put this under the uv light it's going under the uv light for 200 seconds i want the maximum cure time i'm pressing the button twice and putting it under for 200. now back in with the uv resin because i want to build up this wall i want my fishes to be safe i want the walls to be high and i'm just gonna build up those walls with rocks now Again, if you don't work with UV resin, you absolutely could do this with epoxy resin. If anything, you could build some sort of silicon center so that you can build the walls right up around it and then just leave it to cure overnight. And that might even be easier. The UV resin was great, but these rocks are definitely not easy. Then they're completely and utterly faceted on every edge there's no flat edges so it's really hard to stack them if that makes sense anyway to the moss oh i knew i wanted greenery in my ponds i want these ponds to feel like they are alive again super fiddly i would definitely recommend if you're using dried moss in any kind of resin i would definitely recommend two hands you need two hands you need a scraper honor and a scraper offer <laughs> you need something to get the moss off of the tool that you're putting the moss in with and honestly i found a much better method i reckon this is the best method to use with moss and epoxy resin and i will show you that soon because it took me a minute to get it but all I'm doing here is soaking the moss in the UV resin and just placing it where I need to place it. Now at this point it's going back under the UV light but I'm very aware I don't want to cover those fishes up. And I also feel like that grey is not as dark as I wanted it to be. So in we go, another layer. This is quite a repetitive project but if you've got the patience and the time I promise you... I promise you it is so so relaxing it was just so relaxing because each step is the same you're building on it you're just building up you're building up those walls you're adding to it and it's it is repetitive but it's also so satisfying to see everything just come together and I'm getting the walls higher and I'm happy that the walls are getting higher equally they, they, they fall down as much as they I put them up but again this is the UV resin technique what I really need is the UV resin torch the handheld ready to go flash curing torch this 
This is the easiest method now. I've decided that scraping the moss out of my silicon cup and actually scraping my lollipop stick against the rocks, it's just the easiest way. Tweezers went out the window. This is so much easier and it just allows you so much more control. So again, I'm just pushing that moss into the places and here you just see me scraping on, scraping off and rubbing the lollipop stick almost sometimes against the rocks it just really helps embed that moss into those rocky gaps where I need it and I loved this project I don't know what else to say it really was it was like therapy for me I feel like even though my miniature videos <laughs> thanks to YouTube and the algorithm YouTube has told me that my latest three videos are my worst achieving videos this year on my channel. So thank you YouTube for the daily reminder of the arrows down. I have to say they were almost the most enjoyable. They were just the most enjoyable relaxing time that I've had in a while <laughs> honestly especially with you know the polyurethane curing so quickly and the desmonite curing so quickly and this gave me the creative freedom to just take my time and until you hit this with a uv light this is not curing not for you not for your mum <laughs> not for anybody so you have all the time in the world even more than your two-part epoxy resin but yes here you see me I'm still building up the walls I'm still going for it at this point I felt like I needed to darken the pond I just felt like I wasn't getting the depth that I really really wanted so I decided to get a small cup one of those little plastic cups and just add a dab like a teeny teeny dab of black um alcohol ink into some more uv resin and i'm gonna risk it it was a bit risky because what i didn't want to do was pour this into my miniature pond and find that the fish have completely disappeared i still want to see those fish so i added some of the black alcohol ink until i was happy with this darker gray color and i poured that into the pond and you can see here the contrast is so much more different it's definitely more pond color but I did, I felt like I was losing the fish. So I had a little bit of an internal panic. I grabbed my little spoon, my little scoopy spoon, and I just took some of that out and I placed it in the other two that I am also creating off camera, but you will see clips of those as well. And I think I was happy with that. It was slightly darker, but not too dark. Dark enough to add some depth, but not dark enough to take away the fish. And I carried on, guys. I carried on and I built this wall up at this point I felt like I was done I didn't feel like I could build this up anymore without the rocks simply just falling completely out of the mold if you look dead center here you can see that the alcohol ink has actually combined like it's actually taken itself in it's drawn in to the center of the resin not something I thought would happen I thought it would be more dispersed more of an equal color but look how it has drawn itself into the center, giving me that depth in the middle. Stop it. This is what they are all looking like. And it is time to demold. And guys, I have to say, even though it was long, it's a long process layering like this. You're talking a good hour to get everything you want. I am in love with this. I am in love with these. This one here, even though I did these off camera, I put two of the teeny ones in here. This is one of my favorites. I love the way the rocks are just protruding out of the water that way. This one here, major overspill as I expected, but don't worry, we can just carve that back and all will be well with the world. This is what it looks like after I've taken my craft blade and I've just gone around the edges and carved that off. I love them. Again, this is all this feeling of escapism. To me, miniatures offer escapism. Being able to just dive in to a completely different reality and this miniature world, this fairy tale escapism. Guys, I'm all for it. <laughs> At this point in 2023, 
just the escapism the idea of being able to it's like a storybook isn't it just leaving your mind and going somewhere new this one I love this poor little guy I wish I put a friend in with him <laughs> I know I know I should have put a little friend in with him but this is the bigger fish that Tracy sent me um, but this one here, my absolute favourite. This reminds me of something out of the Scottish Highlands, like the way the rocks are so rugged and protruding out of the surface and all of that greenery, that moss adding to that absolute beauty. Love it. And it was, I think it was a good call putting in those metal pieces, those blue sparkly metal inclusions. They definitely add a little something, something, but I love them. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. And again, massive shout out again to Tracy over at Mini Scenes GB for the inspiration on this. She created, or she does create miniatures, but she created the most beautiful miniature pond scene and it just filled me with absolute inspiration so thank you so much to Tracy for always inspiring she puts out quite a lot of videos so I'm a, a bit behind on watching her videos but again very inspiring so thank you I love these I hope you do too and I thank you so so much for the love on my little miniature series and if you are anywhere in the world celebrating Father's Day tomorrow I hope you have a wonderful day and so much love out there to all of the fathers all of the mothers who are fathers and to all of those of you who do not have your father anymore I've had so many messages I'm sending love to absolutely everybody and anybody who actually identifies as a dad. So yeah, enjoy your day. And for those of you celebrating later in the year, you've got all this to come. So I hope you've taken inspiration from this and you make something for later in the year. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.